first of all, I'd like to introduce my colleague and friend, colleague in the open source space, Maxwell Brown, that we've been, as Kit correctly hinted, we're two of the core authors and maintainers of FXTS. She's a total port, a full port of 0.1.0 to TypeScript, and we are almost there to get up to speed with 0.2.0, which you will have some, some slides here about. So the topic of our talk today is Zio as a language. What does it even mean, Zio as a language? After saying what the title was, I actually thought maybe as, as a better title, I would have called it Zio as a meta language, mm. which is rather a language across languages. So our proposal, and it's an argument that we've been discussing for a while when, when porting a lot of the data types coming from Zio word into the world of TypeScript, that basically what, what a programming language is, it's just a set of syntax stuff that defines an algebra and some semantics attached to that. It's not really nothing more than that and it has a domain which a language tries to approach. Like Scala is a great language for JVM domain. Java is a great language, great for JVM domain. TypeScript is a great language for Node.js, JavaScript targets environment. But does a language stop there? We don't think so. We think languages can be embedded in other languages and can be across different languages, which is a kind of a, a new thing. The problems that Zio solves really are, we believe, programming language agnostic. And the ideas that Zio introduced can be applied to many different programming languages. Today we're gonna have a look at how they are applied in two languages and a half, I would say, with the hope that in a few years those slides will contain native languages and way beyond that. So to begin with examples, I leave Maxwell to take over and Shall I go on and change the slides? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, first, I wanted to thank the uh, Zio World organizers for allowing us to come speak here today. This is the first time I'm speaking at a, a tech conference. Um, so, you know, it, I appreciate you guys allowing us to come and speak about uh, the work that we've been doing. Um, but I'm going to start by making a little bit of a controversial statement uh, for the audience that we have here, which is that I actually don't really know how to program in Scala. Um, yeah, exactly, right? Um, and, you know, especially speaking to a room full of Scala developers, that can seem a little strange. Why am I here talking to you guys? Um, but it it's kind of goes back to what Mike said previously, that we really do believe that the uh, core ideas of Zio and the problems that it solves and the data types that it introduces are agnostic of the programming language that you're using. Um, so when you, you know, we can implement the data types that we have in Zio, really, in theory, in any language. And the benefit of that is that developers who learn how to use these data types, uh, that knowledge is portable across many different languages. Because as Mike mentioned, different languages may be suited better or worse to different tasks. So our proposal is that um, we, we think that by applying the, uh, these techniques, it, it may be portable across different languages. So we have a few code examples here that we wanted to show you. Um, these are really, really simple examples, um, but I'm the perfect example of somebody who doesn't know how to program in Scala, but because I learned how to use uh, these ideas introduced by Zio in TypeScript, I was able to whip up some like very rudimentary uh, programs in Zio without much effort, aside from like learning some of the syntax in Scala. Um, so here we have a very simple program um, that requires a console, can fail with a domain error and returns an integer. It succeeds with some numbers, potentially fails, um, and then prints out the summation of those numbers. Um, so again, super simple example, but we wanted to keep it simple uh, because Mike, if you switch to the next slide, this is the exact same program written in our TypeScript port of Zio, which we call effectts. Um, 
And the syntax may look a little bit strange because we have to simulate uh, a lot of different things that Scala has natively in TypeScript, um, such as the for syntax, uh, the, um, the for expressions and whatnot. Um, but the ideas are still the same, and the execution of this program is very similar, uh, aside from being executed on a single thread. Um, the one thing that we've really actually taken to heart, especially since um, Adam spoke at Functional Scala about uh, taking problems and instead of solving them, trying to dissolve them for people, um, is some of the pain points that we have with our syntax as it is currently with effect. So you see, we, we don't have by name parameters in TypeScript, so we need to use lazy function arguments to simulate the laziness. Um, we don't have four expressions, as I mentioned, so we need to use the simulation that we have. Um, but we're working on it, and we're trying to dissolve this problem for people. Um, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Mike really quick to talk about the project that um, he's been working on primarily um, with one of our other core contributors um, to try to work on these issues. Here I, I would like to mention a few things just to have a look. Succeed with, Adam in the last talk correctly pointed out you shouldn't even expose a succeed because it's almost always unsafe to use a succeed. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that has to go away. This here, something that we mentioned by name, an operator which if we remember in Zealand, it's like a nice binary operator that defines, again, strong language. And there's a few other things around the block that really makes the Scala syntax so compact and so nice to look at from, from multiple levels. Here, as, as we can see, we have roughly the same concepts. They are always mapping roughly one to one. Fail is, okay, fail with. Succeed is succeed with, console.println, console.println, dot or die, dot or die. So you learn it in Scala or in TypeScript, and once you've learned a few differences on the syntax, you are able to jump back and forth. But now up to something I'm very excited to present here. It's the first time at a public conference outside of our street club in, in TypeScript land, we are actually creating a language which is a strict superset of TypeScript that borrows a lot of inspiration from Zio and from Scala, where, as you might see, there's just a succeed. And that's a lazy function in Scala word that we've ported over from, from Scala to what we call TS plus, same things with fail. As you might see here, we are running all in composition of functions. That, that pipe is basically a, a pure composition of functions, starting with the argument, and then this is basically an aspect in zero terms. So it's an aspect first API. One of the beautiful things that Scala has is the ability, like John said, to put constructors in the companion object of something and combinators as fluent methods on that. That's precisely what's happening here. Any solution that compiles to JS today will not be tree shakeable and optimizable, except ours that uses compiler level techniques. And it's basically a microsystems on top of, uh, of plain TypeScript. Next features we will implement, hopefully, it's schema derivation and implicit that also come from Scala. We have two minutes left, so back to you. Yeah, I'm just going to go through another two quick examples of just other simple programs that I wrote. Don't, don't judge me on the correctness of my Scala code, please. Um, but you can see the same techniques applied across these two and a half languages, as Mike said. Um, we have a, a managed program in here, here in Scala where we're just opening a file um, and reading from it. Um, the same program written in uh, TypeScript looks slightly differently because we have to use the Node.js APIs, but the ideas, again, are the same. Um, we're still opening a file, reading from it, um, all within a managed context, so we get the open-closed semantics for free uh, by constructing this managed. And then the same 
program written in TS Plus, again, looks much, much closer to the actual Scala implementation. And the, the last thing I'll point out about syntax uh, is that, um, as John mentioned this morning, in Scala, <laughs> you guys were able to get rid of has. Has, has died. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not possible at all in TypeScript because uh, if we reduce the R parameter to a phantom type, um, when we try to unify the, the if we try to create a non-existent type, it, it basically boils down to a never in TypeScript. So we don't, we actually lose all the type information. So for us, has has not died. Um, has has to stay. Has has to stay. Long live has. Um, so the last example here again is just a simple streaming example. Um, we have, again, all of the core Z0 1.0 APIs ported over to TypeScript, um, all working well. Um, in this example, I'm reading from one file and writing to another via a streaming API. In TypeScript, the same program looks relatively similar. The one difference I'll note is we don't really have upper bounds in TypeScript at all. Um, so we have to, we don't have the ability really to create a pipeline, which is... Composable aspects, basically. Composable aspects. So it, for our case, we actually just use function calls directly, which essentially is what an aspect is, transforming the stream directly. Um, and in TS Plus, um, we have to use a little bit of machinery to be able to apply the aspects to our streams and effects, um, but the end result is the same, that we can use uh, this syntax to create programs that are, again, um, very similar between Scala and TypeScript in our case. But I want to reiterate again that I knew nothing about Scala uh, before I wrote this talk, or, or wrote these examples, rather. Um, so really, truly, the ideas that Zio introduces, the data types, um, when they can be moved from one language to another, a developer can be productive in not just the language that they're most familiar with, but also really any language that these data types exist in. Um, and with that, thank you yeah, guys we again. Close.